Hello and welcome to the Second Tier Podcast. I'm Ryan Dilks and I'm joined by the Wayne Rooney to my John Eustace. It's just in peach. Good day to you, Ryan. What's this? Two episodes in one day, an unprecedented event here on the Second Tier Podcast. But we had to do this because Wayne Rooney is being sacked as Birmingham manager. Probably will have been made official by the time this episode actually goes out. Yes, we finished recording this morning's episode, which was a roundup of the first game week of 2024 in the Championship. And pretty much as soon as the episode gets uploaded, the announcement comes through that Wayne Rooney will be departing Birmingham City. Um, Justin, it's been an eventful morning, to say the very least, hasn't it? <laughs> you can say that again. Uh, it's so eventful, the fact that it's, it's got me shaking with rage. Got me shaking with rage, Ryan, because so many, so many things have followed suit from it. Um, it, it, it. It had to happen. It absolutely had to happen. But at the same time, the timing still is a bit. It's a bit weird with me, but mainly because I just I was so confident Wayne Rooney was going to be <laughs> staying until, well, for further notice, shall we say, that I was, yeah, just adamant that he's, he's not even going to go. I'm adamant yeah. that he's not even going to go. Well. If anyone has had the chance to listen to this morning's episode, fair play to you. You are on the ball because that is the different would they time finished, difference. Would they, would they have finished listening to the episode yet? <laughs> That's before? a good point. <laughs> yeah. um, I imagine people will listen to this in due course. But um, if if you go back and listen to this morning's episodes that uh, we're putting up before this, uh, Justin will be saying something along the lines of that AI will take over before Wayne Rooney is sacked. I'm paraphrasing, but that's something along the lines of what you said, wasn't it, Justin? Yeah, Gary Cook will allow sort of AI to rule, uh, rule the world before sacking Wayne Rooney. Um, it's just sort of the essence of what I said and still sort of believe it, but at the same time, it, uh, it seems inevitable that Rooney's on his way out of St. Andrews. Yeah, well, I'm pretty confident it will have been announced by the time this episode has gone out. They could have <laughs> you know, done it this morning because that would have been a lot easier for our this morning show. But here we are, two podcasts in one day. This is the Second Tier Podcast. Welcome to the number one championship podcast, the Second Tier. Thank you for joining us wherever you are. So let's uh, do an emergency pod, Justin, reacting to this breaking news. And it did have to happen, didn't it? I mean, the results speak for themselves, but... When your own fans are chanting, Rooney, time to go, and Wayne Rooney, get out of our club, followed by Rooney getting very loudly booed as he went to clap the fans after the loss to Leeds United. It felt like this was fairly inevitable, didn't it? Without a doubt, without a doubt. I think as soon as you lose the fans, you you are on a one-way course to um, to your P45, basically. You're never going to last outlast fan apathy and fan fan anger at um, your style of football. It's very rare that managers do. And Wayne Rooney, even as big as his name is, got no chance. And Birmingham fans aren't thick. They've been through it over the last 10 years. They've they've been through the exact same scenario yep. with Gianfranco Zola. So they know exactly how this goes. Um, and unfortunately, the, the style of football just wasn't what was promised. And I think even if you are sacking him on the basis of that, not results, but the football that was promised... Yeah, he had to go. Yeah, he had to go. He he did have to go. And 83 days in charge. <laughs> I think he's done well to last that long, to be yeah, quite I'd honest. Be, and see, because 10 points from an available 45 is just absolutely shocking. It, I mean, something's clearly gone very, very wrong when your team goes from 5th to 20th in, what is it, under three months' time. <laughs> that is outrageous, isn't it? But the thing is, like they were comfortably fifth. There was a what is it? it wasn't any rocky form. They were they were comfortably fifth. They were chipping away at results, as you would expect under John Eustace. A big squad turnover in the summer because of the investment from Knighthead, the ownership group, um, and John Eustace was steering a very steady ship. Um, and then Wayne Rooney, I don't know, do, what does he do? Did he come in and pull things off the walls and it changes almost everything and, and, and inevitably the players don't quite follow suit and uh, bad results um, bad results are the, are the result of that it's just a, yeah, it just highlights how much of a joke of a decision it is and um, and how much of a I guess a, a poor manager Wayne Rooney might actually be well it, we, it's not a surprise is it that this has gone so cataclysmically wrong because if it ain't broke don't fix it and Birmingham decided to fix it and made it all the more worse. And you look at just the performances, Birmingham were playing bloody well 
under John Eustace, weren't they? The first 10 games in particular, they were outstanding. Players were playing at their peak levels. I mean, Jay Stansfield in particular was someone who was just in fantastic form under yep. Eustace and plenty of other players as well. And then they change it and the performance levels have dropped astronomically. Um, the, the results clearly have. Rooney is you know, spent a lot of the time blaming the players, including their fitness levels, but it's all gone wrong at one point. And that point is the appointment of Wayne Rooney. So it's clearly just all down to this bizarre decision, which will go down as one of the most bizarre in the history of championship club ownership. Yeah, Birmingham seem to... I would say Birmingham have um, have a lot of... Well, history of making those bizarre decisions, but I mean, there there are there are occasions where you you, you identify there are there are big issues with the style of play. Um, I mean, you're looking at certain certain scenarios where well, <laughs> playing out from the back just isn't working. They're not a, they're not a side that are built to play out from the back, so you've got to play play to the team's strengths. And Wayne Rooney changed that. Um, and it, you know, the reason why I was laughing at you saying that you know, Wayne Rooney was saying the players' fitness levels weren't great. It's because it is, it is genuinely laughable. They were fit enough and good enough to be getting results under John Eustace, and then as soon as he comes in, they they tear away and, and completely flatline. Yeah, and I remember when he first came in, and they didn't start very well. It was three losses on the bounce, wasn't it, when he first came in? Yeah. And to be fair to Rooney, it was a very difficult start. You know, Middlesbrough, Hull, Southampton. That's a very tricky start. And then. I recall against Ipswich where they got a draw. I thought, hang on a minute, I can see something here. I thought this may be the start of something because they drew with Ipswich. Then they got a win at Sheffield, uh, a win against Sheffield Wednesday. And I thought, OK, maybe Rooney is finally getting to grips with this team. But it's been really poor since then. The players, who, I mean, Jay Stansfield, who I mentioned just a second ago, looks a shadow of the player he was. Christian Bielik has gone from one of the best ball-winning midfielders in the division to a shadow of the player that he was. Um, going forwards, they've offered next to nothing for a long time now defensively. Yeah. They've given away chance after chance after chance. They've had no control over games at all. And this is a team who were fifth. And that needs to be really nailed down into the grand scheme of things here. So Rooney has taken out everything that Eustace was doing right earlier in the season and just letting it result in this big Omni Shambles dumpster fire. I think a dumpster fire would be a good way of describing it, mainly because you know you throw everything in a dumpster. Uh, there's nothing in a dumpster that has any any semblance of anything. It's just crap, isn't it? It's just rubbish. It's shit. It's everything you don't. It's everything you don't want. Um, and that's what Rain Rooney's turned the team into. They don't have any direction. Well, sorry, they they had no direction. They had no philosophy. There wasn't this front foot uh, style um, that the, the club's board was after. Nor there was this solid, disciplined, structured style that John Eustace was deploying. They were in between. Um, in between sides, I, I think we saw that over the last sort of four or five games, especially in December. You go to that Cardiff, uh, Cardiff win, where they sort of went back to Eustace sport. They were a lot more pragmatic. They were, they were um, a lot, um, a lot more as to what John Eustace was deploying as opposed to what Wayne Rooney really wanted. And he got a win. And then it was the same against Leicester City, where they were marginally better but still outplayed. Um, so, so they were sort of regressing back to Eustace sport under. Under, under Wayne Rooney and well, like Justin, I said, Justin, Justin, Justin that, we've got to really hammer this home as well one of the main reasons why they decided the owners this was to make this decision was because they said they wanted to introduce a brand of quote marks here no fear football and at no point did we see what no fear football apparently was because I saw no game plan at the time that Wayne Rooney was at Birmingham no game plan except the ball being on fire the ball was on fire throughout the, his entire reign. The players are absolutely terrified of playing out from the back. Dion Sanderson is not a ball playing defender. It's not his sort of slight on him. He's a good solid, good solid defender. But he's not a ball playing defender. You've got to play to the team's strengths. And Wayne Rooney really never did that. <laughs> it took him five or six games to sort of understand and, and go, well, actually, this is uh, my style of play isn't quite working. Maybe I should try and tweak things a little bit. And there's tweaks here and there, but. Ultimately, this no fear football never existed under Wayne Rooney. It's never existed under Wayne Rooney. Not even at Derby. I doubt it was the case at DC United. No fear football has never existed under Wayne Rooney, which makes the 
appointment even more bizarre in the decision to bring him in and replace a good, solid results getting manager in John Eustace with a manager who, I don't know, it, it says Irma a lot, doesn't it? That's, that's all I can really say. Just <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing I can really praise Wayne Rooney with at the moment because the spell has been horrific and these previous spells have been very underwhelming. Ten points from an available 45, drop from 5th to 20th, the fewest points won in the Championship since his appointment, most goals conceded in that time. Question is, Justin, where does this rank amongst the worst managerial reigns we've seen? Well, I said recently that Isco Munoz was the worst reign that I've seen while covering the Championship, and I think that's quite quite a big one. Alan Stubbs at Rotherham springs to mind quite a few years ago. But in terms of um, in terms of hype... In terms of big name, in terms of promise, Wayne Rooney's got to be the biggest flop of a manager the championship has seen. Um, I'm trying to think of big names that are coming in. I mean, look, Billich has done well, Slavin Billich has done well, Moss Hallaby else has done well, um, Philip Cock, who did well for a season at, at Derby. You know, big names have come in and been relative successes, but Wayne Rooney has to be the biggest flop. And 15 games, 83 days, horrendous. This is horrendous on his CV. It's very. It's going to be very difficult to recover from. Yeah, it's a huge blot on his CV, isn't it? But I think when you add in the context of why this all went so cataclysmically wrong, it has got to be regarded as one of the worst managerial reigns in terms of you know points or performances. I think we've definitely seen worse, but not a lot worse. Um, obviously, no fear football was a big factor in this decision. We never saw No Fear Football. That obviously turned out to be a load of bollocks. The whole reason they seemed to sack Eustace and bring in Wayne Rooney in the first place was because he's a bigger name. And that's massively, massively backfired. The confidence from Birmingham fans in the owners, who were doing a fantastic job prior to this decision, um, after only coming in in the summer, that confidence is now deteriorated quite considerably I'd, I would suggest yeah. and Birmingham have gone from a team who look like they genuinely could finish in the playoffs this season to one who is just trying to salvage their season now and you know try to maybe finish outside of the bottom half for the first time in what seven or eight years so it's been a disaster it's been an unmitigated disaster and Birmingham will be licking their wounds after this and trying their best not to get involved in a relegation scrap. I still don't think that will realistically happen, but that's how bad it's gone. Yeah. Well, I was very, I said this morning, in this morning's episode, I was very confident in, in Birmingham City being in a relegation battle if Wayne Rooney was to remain in charge of Birmingham City. Now that isn't the case, I'm more confident in saying that they're not going to be in a rele relegation battle. Well, obviously, it depends on who they get next. But at the same time, they, they really need to choose their next appointment wisely, the, the ownership group, because they've, it's a, a huge, huge cock-up because John Eustace was a very popular man at Birmingham City. He's popular with the players, he's popular with the fans, he's popular with the staff at the club as well. He was a very good personality, whereas Wayne Rooney just hasn't captured that essence at all. So the, the, the ownership group have got a big, big, big monumental decision to make um, in choosing their next manager because we go back to that Gianfranco Zola decision, Harry Redknapp was the next manager. He stayed in the summer. They had that horrendous spending spree towards the end of the transfer window in Harry, Harry Redknapp's, um, well, I say full, first full season in charge, um, August in charge, and then he was sacked. And then it was it was firefighting from there until this summer. So, yeah, big, big decision ahead for the uh, night, 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 night head group. Yeah, well, it's going to be very interesting to see who they do get in next. I have seen reports saying that John Eustace would be open to a return to Birmingham. And let's be honest, they could do a lot worse, couldn't they, Justin? They, they absolutely could. I, I think that would be a very good decision for the, uh, for the ownership to come in and, and, and bring him back into the club. It would obviously be incredibly embarrassing for them. It would be incredibly embarrassing for Gary Cook, almost make his position as CEO untenable. It should be anyway, because this has been his doing in getting Wayne Rooney in charge. Um, but John Eustace is a very good championship manager. He's shown that over the last sort of 14 months as a, as a manager in the, in the division. He's a very good coach as well. And like I was saying, his personality is a big, big factor in Birmingham being a success. They should have been very close to the relegation zone last season. They weren't. They were comfortably, they, comfortably, they, they, they stayed up comfortably with a threadbare squad. Barely, you know, a, lot, a lot of quality. And then we saw that quality come in in the summer and they improved. So, yeah, I would be, I'd be very pleased if Eustace came back um, 
came back into Birmingham, but they have to triple his wages on what he was on before. <laughs> I I think if Birmingham did do that, it would be very honourable of them. It would be a great way to say, look, we admit we cocked up here massively and we're willing to hold our hands up and say, yes, we, we accept that this was a bad decision to make. Apologies to you, John. Let's just forget about it and move on and get on with, you know, getting Birmingham back to where they were. Whether they actually do that or not, I think I'd be quite surprised because yeah. it seems that, well, as we were discussing earlier with this particular move, Birmingham are quite keen to get someone in who's a big name. Now, it'd be interesting to see who that big name would possibly be. Steve Cooper was someone who was being linked with uh, the job a week or two ago. I would be surprised if that happened, if I'm being brutally honest. But it wouldn't surprise me if they did gain someone who is a big name, maybe not of the same level as Wayne Rooney, but certainly a much bigger name than John Eustace. Now, is that the right way to go? It depends who they get in, of course. If they ended up getting like someone like Frank Lampard, then fucking hell. Um, but, oh, my uh... God. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> breathing into a paper bag. Oh, my God. Yeah. I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> yeah. that, that's the worst thing, isn't it? And that's why my faith in, in particular in the new owners of Birmingham has been pretty pretty badly scathed after this decision. So I'm very, very, very interested to see who they're getting next. I think it will be someone who's a biggish name. I just hope it's someone who... Has, has got a better record at, at championship level than Wayne Rooney. He's got a better record as a manager than Wayne Rooney. I think I think anybody who's had a varied degree of success who hasn't finished um, consistently lower mid-table towards the relegation zone, I know it's not a relegation zone in the MLS, but DC United were a pretty poor side um, under him. And obviously Derby were relegated and almost relegated under him. They can just they they do well to just get a manager who's a steady hand, a uh, Tony Mowbray, a uh, John Eustace, Alex Neal. For goodness, that, they, you're absolutely right. They wouldn't, but this is that's the exact route I think they should go down because that's where that's where the, that's how the squad is built, and that's how the squad is what's what the squad is used to, um, and that's what the club I think needs it needs that stability in a very fresh period of of, of new ownership. I mean. You mentioned Steve Cooper being sacked by... Well, you mentioned Steve Cooper. Obviously, he was sacked by Nottingham Forest. I remember when Marion Akers bought Nottingham Forest and they went through manager after manager after manager after manager, blah, 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 so on and so on. Didn't work out until Steve Cooper was 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 um, put in charge and it finally did work out. You don't want that to happen at Birmingham City. It's not sustainable. Um, you can't keep chucking money um, at a football club and hope it works. Um, they have to go for someone steady to, to manage this interim period of, of new ownership and a new squad. Yeah. But I imagine the long-term plan was to have Rooney, but it just became just untenable and they had to make a decision. So we'll be interested to see what is the next part of this big grand scheme for the Birmingham ownership. And that's why it's so intriguing to see who they do get in. I think one last topic for us to discuss on this uh, on this uh, particular subject, Justin, is what next for Wayne Rooney? Surely that's his managerial career in England done for, isn't it? Because I can't see him getting another job another job in the championship and I doubt he would drop down to League One or League Two so maybe something abroad maybe back to the MLS my goodness he's in such a strange position because not, no disrespect to the guy he's not charismatic or eloquent enough to be a pundit is he that I would be very I'd find it very difficult to listen to him um, covering games which sound, might sound harsh but it's very obvious um, as for a managerial perspective um in the term, in the championship is he's done and he's he's got family ties over here so it'd be very difficult for him to go back abroad i think for me i think he should just i don't know enjoy his time enjoy some time off it's very difficult to see where he goes next yeah. it, well it, let, let's be honest he's not exactly needing the money i imagine is he so i think he's pretty tied up in that and if he just well, wants exactly. to retire from management then Maybe that'll be the route to go. Saudi, perhaps. I think he was being linked with a job over there in the summer around that time. So it won't surprise me if that happens. But I, I can't see him getting another job in England anytime soon or ever. Well, no, I think, I think if you if you look at him as a, as a manager in, in the championship, the the perfect metaphor for his time as a manager in the championship 
is him being knocked clean out by Phil Bardsley in that kitchen all those years ago. <laughs> the clip of that is the is the perfect summary of Wayne Rooney as a manager. Yeah, um, I think it also says a lot about how he is as a manager without Liam Mazzinia by his side. Of course, Liam Mazzinia was one of those assistants who seemed to get a lot of the credit for how a club was doing um, under their manager. So when Rain, Rain Rooney was getting all the credit for how well Derby were doing, despite everything that was going on there, Liam Mazzinia obviously has gone a different path to Rooney and he's doing a fantastic job at Hull while Rooney has just sank Birmingham to a near relegation battle after being in the playoffs. So, yeah, I think uh, it's now become apparently clear who may have been in charge when uh, that was all happening. Um, we'll finish off with the statement from um, Birmingham regarding the uh, dismissal of Wayne Rooney, which has now been made official as we have been recording this podcast. I would like to thank... Uh, the co-owners Tom Wagner and Tom Brady, Gary Cook, for the opportunity to manage Birmingham City and the support they all gave me during my short period with the club. However, time is the most precious commodity a manager requires. I do not believe 13 weeks was sufficient to oversee the changes that were needed. Personally, it will take me some time to get over this setback. I've been involved in professional football as either a player or manager since I was 16. Now I plan to take some time with my family as I prepare for the next opportunity in my journey as a manager. So it sounds like he will be taking some time out, but... Was planning to continue as a manager. Don't know where that's going to be, Justin, but I do not believe 13 weeks was sufficient to oversee the changes that were needed. I think I well, think you oversaw plenty of changes, Wayne. It didn't go very well. I was going to say, it took him 13 weeks to destroy a football club. <laughs> Come on now, Wayne. Yeah. We're not, no one's that naive. Yeah, give it a rest, uh, give it a rest Wayne. Uh, I think we'll end that there, Justin. So there we go. Wayne Rooney, sacked by Birmingham City. Not a surprise at all, it's got to be said. Uh, and actually, just one last question for you. What will be your main memory of Rooney's time at St Andrews? That fucking meme. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I can't remember when that meme came out, but I think the Secretary Podcast Twitter has tweeted that meme so many times because it is an all-time classic championship meme and look it was a disaster from a Birmingham perspective but the one positive from that time is Wayne Rooney looking so bereft standing up against a wall fantastic thank you Wayne this has been the second tier podcast we'll be back again on Thursday I've been Ryan Dilks I've been Justin Peach and a big thank you for listening